Hi, this is an assembly update on the RepRap Wilson TS 3D printer. Uh, since the assembly videos that I shot before, I've made a couple small changes to the design, and so I want to explain how those are supposed to work uh, to either people who've already built the printer and want to upgrade some items, or people who haven't built it yet. So, this is the printer as I've been using it. Um, the first thing that I want to uh, just talk about is the uh, surface that I have the printer attached to. I mentioned in the videos before, but I don't think I ever showed uh, that I plan to attach the printer to a piece of plywood. Um, that's what this is. This is 18 inches on a side, a half inch thick plywood. And uh, the reason I've attached it to it is um, I, I like to be able to have the power supply um, mounted with the printer so that they can't move around separately. It uh, makes it a lot easier to relocate the printer this way. Um, it also makes the printer more rigid. Uh, as you can imagine, the, there are holes in the corner pieces here in the back where you can put screws down through the, the uh, wood. There's also slots built into the Y ends uh, for that now. So you can attach as many of those uh, as you want if you want to attach it to a deck. Uh, the biggest uh, reason you might want to do this though is so that you can add a, a corner brace like I've added here. Um, this is something that I thought I'd try out to see how much extra stiffness it gave the frame. And I can't say that I noticed uh, much of a difference in prints once I added this but it really does uh, make the printer much more rigid. Um, I imagine it will hold up to abuse a lot better like that. And as you can see, I've only attached it on one side. The other side still has the electronics and the power supply. And just this one piece here uh, really makes the printer much more um, stiff. To, to build that, you'll need to print two of these little brackets. Uh, this is in the repository of parts. And the way this works is pretty simple. It's made to accept the same extrusions that are used for the frame. So with one of them, you attach it here, uh, and you can put it anywhere you want. And then the other one, you just flip around. It's the same part, and it goes here. And so you put a piece of extrusion like that. And you could use uh, about any length that you would want there. You could use a shorter piece like this, um, or something like this. You, this piece here is the same length as the top and bottom crossbars. So to give you an idea, that would stick out about that far. I think you get probably just as much benefit, uh, you know, with a piece that's half the that attaches halfway up. Um, but you can decide what you think is best. The other thing that I want to mention uh, just about the print surface, which doesn't have so much to do with this as it does with the, the desk that I have it sitting on, is with the filament uh, spool mounted so high up on the printer, if your desk that the printer is on isn't real sturdy, uh, then as the, as the y-axis moves back and forth rapidly during printing, it can start to set up a little bit of a vibration uh, forward to backward and if the whole desk is moving with that then that can cause a little bit of a uh, wobble in the in the upright part of the frame so this will help with that also but the best thing is just to get a uh, to make sure you've got it on a really sturdy table uh, not a card table or something that has a lot of play in the in the legs Okay, now the other uh, updates that I wanted to mention are for the belt tensioners. So originally, the uh, x-axis uh, belt idler was inside the, this end, the idler end, and the y-axis uh, belt, it goes through this idler down here. And I noticed that it's kind of difficult to get the belts really nice and tight uh, the first time and it's not something that's very easy to, to fiddle with. Um, so what I've done here is I took um, uh, tensioner 
idle or tensioner design that is part of one of the uh, Prusa i3 uh, iterations and I've adapted that same idea for this end so if you want to use that part it looks like this when it's printed and it fits into the y, y uh, the x-axis end like this so to assemble it you'll need to get uh, M3 nut and it slips into this little slot on the end like that and then a 30 millimeter M3 screw goes in to the narrow end here so thread that in just enough that the head or the end of the screw starts to come through but leave it as far back uh, don't thread it any further than you have to and then assemble it into the idler end you'll put your M4 20 millimeter screw that the idler originally used uh, it just now goes through this tensioner so now you can see how there's some play and then the other you'll need another M4 20 millimeter screw to replace the purpose of this one here to actually hold the uh, the idler bearing and then you thread the uh, belt around it when you're assembling the x-axis and with this loose you tighten it as much as you can you know with your with just hand tight but you don't have to worry too much about getting it perfect because then after it's assembled you turn this screw and as you turn the 30 millimeter screw from the outside it pulls that whole thing by pushing against the M4 screw it'll pull the whole thing that way and it'll make the so that it's really easy to get the belt uh, really nice and tight. Now I did something else on the y-axis which is hard to see on this machine because it's assembled but I have the the new piece this is the the new uh, belt holder for the y-axis uh, this part all on the left here is the same as as the original belt idler the screws are in the same positions and the cutouts are the same for the for the GT2 belt but now there's this little extra uh, piece hanging on here and there and when you print this you also print one of these little um, guys and to assemble this one again you'll need another M3 nut and it goes into the top slot here and another M3 uh, 30 millimeter screw threads into that nut sometimes the nut falls in there a little too far okay and I'll just screw that oh. that through till it's sticking through a quarter of an inch or so and then this little piece goes just push it onto the end of the M3 screw you can even hold it and kind of thread it in and it should bite into the plastic a little bit like that and then when you back that screw out it'll pull that in so that it's uh, fits into the end here and and it'll just be flush with the where the belt goes. Now when we assemble it, and I've got here a kind of a mock-up. This isn't really assembled, but the Y end. So when we attach the belt, we've got the Y axis assembly upside down. Uh, there would be bearing holders and, and everything here. And then our belt would feed around like this and around the motor and the free end of the belt meaning the part that's able to move left and right uh, it, it's going to be outside and then the loose end here is what we put through the cut in the 
belt holder. You push that belt down in there and then attach it here on the end with a zip tie. And so once you've got that on there, the the tied down end of the belt will be going passing right in front of our little adjuster. You get the whole thing assembled. Again, you just tighten it uh, as you can by hand. And then from the side, with the printer assembled even, you can then take a screwdriver. You tighten this screw and the little plunger here will push against the side of the belt, which will take up a little bit of slack um, and make the belt nice and tight. These belts don't really loosen up um, with use much, in my experience. They they have uh, fiberglass reinforcement inside, so they don't really stretch, but eventually they do uh, need tightened a little bit. So that should make it easy to do that uh, as you use the printer. Now aside from those uh, changes to parts, I also wanted to mention I have uh, been making adjustments to some of the uh, sizing or some of the hole sizes so that the parts will hopefully print a little bit better. Um, there's been a lot of problems with getting uh, the parts to fit um, without a lot of extra drilling and sanding being needed. Um, so I just want to show you here kind of the expectation for fit on these parts now. Uh, the, the rods should should really slide in pretty easily. Um, you can see there's a little uh, slit here in the top uh, which I added mainly just so you can tell by visually looking when the rod has reached the the bottom you know it's all the way in instead of having to kind of guess. And the extrusions they should fit into these uh, much easier now but hopefully without being actually you know too loose. When I the the models when I print these on my machine, I print them with a half millimeter nozzle. And so adjustments to the models have been made kind of with that size nozzle in mind. And I slice all of the models with Cura. And so different nozzles and different slicers, they might treat um, the perimeter, perimeters differently uh, as far as inside versus outside dimensions. This is kind of a nagging problem with a lot of uh, the RepRap uh, slicing software. So I mention this only because if you happen to be slicing the models with a different slicer or maybe printing with a smaller nozzle, then you may notice holes coming out a little too large. Um, so if you do, first of all, I'd like to know about it if you'll drop me a line and tell me uh, what nozzle and what slicer you're using. And then secondly, adjustments to the models should be fairly easy to make um, if you know ahead of time that you need to do that. Um, I'm going to make a little calibration object that has like the uh, slots for the extrusions and the and a hole for the 8 millimeter rods, um, possibly a nut trap or two built into it so that you can print that uh, calibration object first uh, without spending a lot of time or plastic and then kind of check your printer setup. So keep an eye out for that. On the X ends, uh, there was the same kind of problem. The bear linear bearings into the X ends were really kind of too tight and I've loosened them up quite a bit and what you'll notice now on both ends is that it's impossible to put the bearing in from uh, what would be the bottom of the end and the top of the end has a little bevel built into the edge so that it's very easy to put the bearing in and when you put them in uh, they're going to be snug like you want, but they should go in pretty much right off the the printer without any extra work. And the reason that I've closed off this end here is when the printer's built, that side's down, and with these a little bit looser, um, and like I said about the uh, variation from machine to machine as far as printing, if they ended up too loose, which this one isn't, this one's just just right, then with this uh, end closed down a little bit, they can't fall out. They can't work their way out. So they'll work their way to the bottom and then they'll just stay there. So I just wanted to mention that. Uh, these holes for the smooth rods here, I've also opened up a little bit. Um, they should slide in just like that. 
you don't want these real tight uh, because the two x in the distance between the two x ends uh, has to be just exactly the same as the distance between your um, vertical rods uh, so that you're not binding up the z axis so I think that'll work better this way and that's all I wanted to cover I, uh, mention those things and tell you about the new parts so if anybody has a question um, you got a suggestion for a improvement, please let me know. Thanks.